Hello, and welcome to the masterclass as part of this year's festival. I'm excited to share with you the next hour of work on the Bartok Viola Concerto with Kinga Voljaska. Welcome, thank you so much for coming to this lovely part of our annual festival. Kinga and Kumi, thank you for coming out this afternoon, this beautiful day, to play Bartok Viola Concerto for us. Um, and just some context, we've, this is the ninth year of the festival. Each year we've always had a little masterclass as part of the festival. So it's very special this year that we can keep that spirit alive um, and film and present it like that. So thank you for being our guinea pigs for that. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's get started with this fascinating late Bartok piece. And you're still studying at the Royal College of Music. Yes, and yes. you've come up from London. And you're from Poland? Yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you.
Thank you. Enjoyed that. It was lovely to hear that. Um, and what a fascinating piece this is. I mean, just we don't have a lot of time to go into detail, but just for anyone watching who doesn't know the background to this story, it was the last piece Bartok ever wrote. And in fact, he didn't even finish it, as, as you well know. You know, it exists in sketch form. So essentially, he left this, this incredibly messy and confusing manuscript. You know, there were phrases written upside down here, the movement there, material there, and he left it like that. And it was um, sort of given to his student, Tibor Surly, to go away and make a, an edition of it. So he very mysteriously just disappeared with all the sketches <laughs> and then came back and then presented this piece, which then became the Bartok Fiola Concerto for many, many years. But there was always a slight bit of doubt about it, mm. that no one really quite believed that it was <laughs> completely Bartok. And then, of course, as, as the years went on into the 70s, 80s, people started to look very closely at the manuscript, which I think was then released. And they thought, wow, what, why has he done this? You could have done this. Why has he done this? So it, essentially, it's a piece that is, it's almost like taking, I was thinking, taking the most beautiful picture by Picasso and ripping it up into a million pieces. And then saying, stick it back together and make a Picasso. It's very, very hard, you know. So in a way, it's a big compromise, this piece, as, as we all know. But it's still a, a beautiful piece of music. And you, you play the, the Tibor Shirley version, which is a very logical way to organise the, the manuscript. And you, we could sit here for hours and talk about the little minutiae of detail in the, the manuscript, about the certain chords and things. But for me, I think that misses the point of whatever this is, it's a Hungarian piece of music. You know, and he did leave certain sort of codes in the manuscript of what he wanted. And certainly the pitches are there and the rhythms are there. Um, everything else, bowing choices, slurs, of everything you do is generally, I mean, you did a few different things, which is nice, but generally it's the, the Primrose yeah. version of it, you know, which is just one person's thought. But what I'd like to get to is like, um, just like the actual sort of original concept for the piece. Like, let's just go from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because you play great, there's, actually, there's no problems at all with what you do. It's just, I just would love to invite you to sort of explore the, um, the original idea of this piece, which for me, the fact that it's Hungarian is a very big thing. You know, immediately that has massive implications for how you play in terms of like the, the way you articulate the sort of Hungarian music has this very particular yeah. colour to it. If you listen to all those Hungarian string players, you know, there's a school of playing which is incredibly articulate, mm. like the language. Hungarian is incredibly, like the syllables and the consonants are very, very, very strong. And that's in the music, it's in the DNA of the music. So we have to, we have to go there with that and, and think of music in a very punctuated way mm -hmm. when need be. Um, so that's what I'd like to talk about because everything else viola-wise is, is fine. I just would love to just think how you can colour this piece yeah. more personally and more, um, more, in line with what you're seeing on the page. So let's go from the very beginning. Tell me about this opening. So we start with a solo viola entrance that builds to a, a higher point and then it just yeah. sort of disappears. What, how are you thinking about it? I think like actually the piece starts after this big, it's, I don't know, I think it's like a cadenza. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And actually yeah. the piece starts yeah. Yeah, only in a tempo. Uh, Sure, well, yeah. Well, and don't forget, all of those things aren't from Bartó. Our tempo, precipitato, all of this is someone else giving yeah, those yeah, 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 So it's, yeah. it's kind of fascinating to, to look at this 
music without any information and any bones at all. I find mm -hmm. that really useful. I find it quite much more useful to look at like the second violin concerto, look at how he organises his bowings. Okay. And actually I would yeah. think about that. But yeah, but in terms of what he does musically, what does he do if you had to describe to someone who doesn't know this piece? In terms of the note values, what do we start with? Quarter notes? Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. Uh. Then it goes to big triplets. Which then goes to eight, oh, okay. which then so goes it's to sixteenth. Like like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. He's written in yeah. in a cello rando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that very interesting already. Yeah, yeah. So I would, I would invite you. Of course, you can do it how you want, but I wouldn't necessarily jump in immediately and inflict your rubato and your el cello rando on something that actually is already there. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know, he's actually being quite meticulous about what he wants, and I would yeah. say, firstly, enjoy that idea of di da ba. I wouldn't hang around like something you did. You sign, you signpost the changes, which is completely your decision. But just make sure you can really justify it. Because if if you can't justify, I would say go with what he really asks. So for me, that's already a big thing at the beginning. And in terms of the pitches of the the harmonies at the beginning, what's he doing? He's basically just sort of. Yeah, it's like a washing one, machine, isn't yeah. it? It's the same pictures, yeah, just going yeah. around. Yeah, the same notes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So for me, those two things are exciting already. Yeah. And I think you could colour that as really personally. Okay. Show us these pictures, listen to them, mm -hmm. and the way that he just repeats them, and they get faster and faster and faster and faster. Okay, yeah, yeah. Already that's like a very honest way to interpret that mm -hmm. material, I think. Mm -hmm. And then how to bow it is another question. But just go from the beginning again, mm -hmm. and just sort of show us these pictures just in a very sort of pure way, and then the way they just get faster. Yeah, exactly. Experiment with that. I know it's, kind of, you, it's built in what you're doing before, but definitely be excited by playing da da ba 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 Not sort of da 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 ba 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 Don't signpost the changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll leave that with you. But also in terms of the harmony, um, there's a lot of pain in this music, isn't there, when you think of all the intervals? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he was dying of cancer in a tiny little apartment in Manhattan. You know, he was about to pass away in September. I think he wrote it in March, 45. Background of the whole Second World War and uh, mm -hmm. that whole sort of thing. He was in a lot of pain when he wrote this piece, which for me is part of this piece, just the sort of um, loneliness of it. So the way you colour everything with your bow, I'd like you to really okay. think about that, mm -hmm. you know, because you play very beautifully, which is great. Yeah, um, you know, that, but that's half mm -hmm. of it, yeah. you know, and when you're confronted with a piece like this, it's not always beautiful. Yeah. And in fact, I, I would argue the melodies in this, me, this piece are generally still a bit sort of odd, oh, 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 oh. okay, sort yeah. of restricted, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I mean by it. I just yeah. colour it very personally to you. Don't try and just play beautifully. Because okay. you yeah. do that really well, mm. which, which is great. You know, Smooth bow changes, we're told to make all the time as kids. And it's yeah. a very important beginning, but it's half of the story. Yeah. Mm. If music has a strong consonant, you, you can't change your bow smoothly. Yeah. yeah, I'm really interested in that. I'm interested, like, if I asked you to say something in Polish. It's interesting how each language has different sort of um, enunciations. I find Russian oh. and Polish have quite sort of beautiful, soft sort oh. of uh, syllables. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. opposed to Hungarian, which is very hard, and English, which is in the middle. I think Polish is very hard. Uh, what yeah. What would you... Maybe. What would you like to... No, no I just, I just putting it out there. I just find that interesting, <laughs> the, the, the combination of language and music. Um, but don't be afraid to yeah. change your bow actively, mm, okay. yeah? Okay, 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 okay. Even at the beginning, if you want to show the pain of an interval, mm -hmm. okay. show it. For example that, 
I'm being really picky now because you play fantastic. Did you play the, the bass, the cello part of that song? There's a drama that with that F sharp. Mm -hmm. So don't vibrate. Yeah. That's another thing. I'm just going to put it all out there today because we don't have much time. For me and vibrato have a very conflicted relationship. <laughs> it's very important, but it's also so not important sometimes. Yeah. So always make sure you can justify your vibrato. And if you feel it's really beautiful and yeah, intense, okay. yeah. fine. But sometimes I think we, as viola players, string players, we go onto autopilot. Yeah. And I think you spend a lifetime trying to control your vibrato. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a journey, it's a journey, but enjoy, enjoy it, yeah? yeah? Do it again. Good, good. And in terms of just like playing, it, it's, it's beautiful how you play, there's no problems at all. But what I want you to do is like influence your bow much more. Talk, talk with your bow, talk, okay. you know. For example, I feel if I'm being like hypercritical, I guess it's my job. <laughs> You're playing like this, which is fine in, for some context, but I think harmonically you... Imagine him sitting in his lonely apartment in New York in agony for cancer, you know. I find that very, very sort of evocative, that, that thought. And I, for me, there's no beauty in this. I know it's very well played like that, but maybe... Okay, I, we're never told to play like that yeah, okay. when we're taught. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm really interested in that because actually, if you want to project a drama, or a, or a personality to your sound, you have to go there and think, is that too much? Maybe it's not sometimes, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm exaggerating, but yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And yeah, also when yeah. it comes to your melodies, instead of always... Mm. It's beautiful, but maybe sometimes... Mm. A sort of resistance to the string, yeah. not always like this. And for me, just having thought about it a lot, I think that's kind of part of this Hungarian style of playing, which is very, okay, yeah. very enunciated. And it's kind of, for me, in the DNA of, of this music, mm -hmm. like whatever edition you use, whatever anyone says, you can't take away the, the DNA of it, which is there. So enjoy your fingers of your bow, because you have a beautiful, you, there's no problems at all, but you use your equipment to color the music. Go, go from the triplets, somewhere there. Where, wherever you want. Yeah, and don't let go of your fingers. These fingers. Like um, those things that stick on rocks at the beach, mm. what they call mm -hmm. like mollusks, yeah. like the suction pads on yeah. your fingers are what ultimately influence your consonants. Mm -hmm. So don't, again, don't play well all the time. Like we're told, beautiful, wonderful. <laughs> it's more um, influence it with your fingers. Yeah. And that was much better. And actually, I would be interested to say if I had a a machine to measure the decibel levels. I don't think it's any louder, but I think out there it suddenly has a colour. It's just okay. like, it's like if I'm talking like this, or I'm talking like that, yeah. and you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's not actually a volume thing, it's just a, like a yeah. enunciation. Mm -hmm. um, good, just go from 10, and let's go on. Very smooth, your bow change. Just to point it out to you. It's getting better. But I, I invite you to go like 
a hundred miles further with that until I say that's that's really <laughs> horrible. <laughs> And just one very boring technical thing. If you really want to articulate, make sure that it's from the string. This, yeah. you pull. Mm -hmm. You have the yeah. string and you pull. Yeah. 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 We don't always have to play like this. We can also play from the string. Yeah. 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 Mm. And again, it's just a piece like this really puts the, sh the light on those aspects. Um, let's carry on. Let's carry on. You know what I'm saying. It's well played. Just remember always your function in whatever music you play. You know, of course, as you said quite rightly, I think you invite the orchestra here. This is the beginning of this piece. Yeah. And they come in. And then, so what are these little things? How would you describe those? Just definitely not a melody. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what, what would you call it? Yeah. Yeah, commentary. Yeah, yeah. Commentary, yeah, yeah. exactly. So if, if that's commentary, it's like a sort of support to the me melody. Yeah. But the commentary still needs to be really interesting. It's like, ah, yeah. it sort of comes into the focus. So try and play with a little bit more density. Think of gravity, yeah. you know, it's, it's our only friend as a string player. If you fight gravity, you never win. <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah. just to make your impact strong and, and clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that always down. Oh, you do that very well, but just particularly these sort of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How about? Yeah. yeah. So what's that? How would you describe that, what you're playing now? Because of course that's the first material. What's that? Oh, if you gave it a name. Yeah, it's, oh, it's hard to call it. Um, I, just, just rhythm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like a, yeah, it's yeah. like a rhythmic sort of bit of spice to the melody. You have to characterise that as such. I would suggest rather than... Uh, again, you're yeah. playing it really well, but maybe you shouldn't play it so well, just that you get a... You know, just enjoy yeah. the rhythmic yeah. element of it, yeah. Yeah. perhaps, yeah. just to make it all a little bit more uh, characterised. Yeah. Uh, do the same place. Think of this idea of making sound with the least um, effort. Yeah. 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 Would you do more weight? Yeah. I think basically playing a string instrument really well is like a, obviously it's a constant challenge, but it's like sort of engineering, isn't it? You want to get the the goal is you want to have the maximum output, the maximum output with the minimum input, yeah. which is any great machinery, is any great feat of engineering is like you get the minimum input and you get the maximum output. Like a, like a bike, you, like when you change gears, you can go up a hill because you're just in the right gear. If you, if you like really use the weight of your arm actively, yeah, yeah don't, don't resist it ever, yeah. really. No. Um, good, let's go on. Let's go on to this second material. And again here, I would colour it even more personally to you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not only beautiful, that's the thing I'll keep saying to you, because you play it very beautifully, which is more than half we, what we need, but we need this as well. Just...
again, try not to let your bow um, okay. fight gravity. Keep your bow yeah. like, like your servant. <laughs> Keep yeah. it on the string and sort of make it work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get a little bit more weight into the sound. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going better. I think that that melody, um, it's something just to experiment with when, when you play, but try and take yourself away from here and l always listen. Basically, just really listen to the sort of articulation you want. Because I think, from experience, in a, big, in a big space, even in a space like this, for it to sort of come off the page and to come out, mm -hmm. you'll be surprised how much you have to, like, speak clearly mm -hmm. and slowly as well, mm -hmm. like anything. So I would rather say the... Can we just play from that melody? Or use all, deploy all of your arsenal of technique yeah, yeah. to help the music. Do you know what I mean? And I think, and I'm happy to be disagreed with, it's, it's very nice always to have a discussion like this, but I don't find this beautiful. Um, I'm saying just yeah, yeah. maybe there's a color in there to, to yeah. be explored and maybe that's too much but I would go more in that direction yeah. Yeah. just just generally give it a go and see see what you think So, so have a think about that. And always, for us, f all, all, all musicians, time is one of those things where everything always goes too fast. We always want to go faster. So take the opportunity to slow yourself down wherever. Also slow in your technique. The Take your time to like um, yeah, yeah, put the yeah. bow into the string. Yeah. yeah? The, the danger comes for us all when we get excited or whatever. Things happen on the top of the instrument, and that's when the danger zone happens because we're not we're fighting gravity. Yeah. It's it's this feeling that we always want to look for, and it's hard to find sometimes. I know it's not, but that's what those are the principles we're working with. Yeah. yeah. So have a think about that. This new section, tell me about this character. How would we describe this C oh, minor? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like it just, um, yeah, it's completely different uh, to anything what was before. Yeah. And also the tempo is like, yeah, uh, I don't know, the rhythm is kind of again driving. Yeah. And again, don't be influenced by the Pucker Menomosa tempo, none, yeah, yeah, none of that's yeah. original. So you, yeah, you're yeah. free to do what you want there. But yeah. what's the character? Is It's like, like rhythmically speaking. Yeah, like definitely driving. Forward, yeah, uh, it kind of almost becomes like a sort of dance, doesn't it? A sick dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So again, d deploy your technique a little bit more like that. Um, use the weight of your arm a bit more. You know, enjoy this and choreograph it as well. There's something. Dancey. Yeah. Really work hard, yeah. pushing and pulling your bow. Yeah. Yeah. 
just directly from there. Just the one technical thing I'd invite you to think about. You want to always play like this, which is fine. But your shoulder is also designed to do that. Mm, okay. You know, the elbow is a thing that opens and closes like a door. Yeah. That, that's all it can do. But the shoulder is built, and I'm no biologist, I'm no doctor, having got a D in GCSE biology, but <laughs> the shoulder goes like that, doesn't it? It's open, it's mm -hmm. a ball in a socket. It opens and closes, it's yeah. like that. Yeah. So you're only using your shoulder like this. And I would invite you to be much more excited about this element okay. of your technique as well. We don't have to... You see yeah. the difference between that or this? Yeah. Yeah, and just for a healthy physicality, yeah. you want your shoulder to be natural. It goes, it can move in any direction. Yeah. It's not only doing this. Yeah. It's, it's quite an important thing, that. Give it a go. So you really push and pull. <laughs> much, much better. Like, immediately, it just comes out. You're not restricting, I don't even know if it's louder or clearer, but it's just your physicality is more open okay, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 So use your, French are the lucky language because they even have the right words for up bow and down bow. They have pousser, tirer, mm -hmm. you know, push, pull, mm -hmm. push, pull. I mean, that's the fundamental of what we do. So always push, mm -hmm. pull. And when you push, yeah. you can enjoy that. Yeah. It's much better, do it again. In a way, I think this is quite a hard passage to really work with it, looking more and more for how you can achieve clarity. Because yeah. clarity is actually where you find real character. Like suddenly that's when your character projects and comes off the page. And I know it's difficult, but if you think about two things, that, I mean, that's already better. But think about how you start notes. I think you have a tendency, which is understandable. You want to make your sound always like this. And I would like you to think more of this. So the beginning is like really strong. So, for example, if I play, uh, on, on, and I would bet that you've practiced it quite a lot like this. If I'm not being too rude. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, and the more you practice it like that, it will, yeah. you'll, the soft edges will be there. And I, I think to get it out, I would practice it quite aggressively. Okay. Just like, yeah. yeah? Just yeah. to get those consonants out. Yeah. Um, yeah, why don't you go from that bar? Is that like bar three of the Menomoso in this edition? Better. So what it actually what it boils down to is you being so organised that you're always just ahead of where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that. that now yeah, no, that, that's so better. Much. But it's like the tennis players, isn't it? If you watch great tennis players, and there are so many analogies for us, like the great tennis players, they they're always in the right place for the shot, <laughs> and the bad ones, you're just constantly running, <laughs> like you're constantly running for the ball and you're just shattered. But yeah. the right, so they're always just moving at the right time. Yeah. So you can buy yourself time here, here. Here, here, there. Just go a bit quicker yeah. so you, you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Not like the bad tennis. 
yeah, it's a timing thing, actually. That, that's all it is. Um, do the same again. think about the timing of these yeah. things yeah. that's yeah. all it boils yeah. down to like to play really I think the most vir the, the most virtuosic players like the really great virtuosi who really play that repertoire really well have the ability to think slowly under pressure mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that you're always moving at the right time it's not actually about playing fast it's just about being really organized yeah. so that's better when you get to this melody here again it's your choice but I would be very careful about fingering things up here because I think the folk, this folk tune, when it comes, yeah. it has much more impact. Yeah. But if I play... Okay. Yeah. It's, it's folk. Yeah. Yeah. I would be a little bit more um, folky with that. Yeah. But just yeah. with fingerings, generally, I'd stay very low. Unless you want to make a really beautiful point, which yeah. later you have to, but yeah. maybe not there. Um, could we just go to the next entrance? Maybe just around one before 60. Mm -hmm. And again here, we're into this world of, it's a melodic episode, but is it really all beautiful and happy melodically? No. <laughs> no, exactly. And I would enjoy the, yeah. the syncopation yeah. between you and the orchestra is actually where the friction is. Yeah. yeah. You know, so again, I just, put it all out there, I would be, I would experiment with a vibrato that doesn't dominate. Yeah. Enjoy just like the pitches. Yeah. And if there's a bit of vibrato, fine. The, the role between you and the orchestra is really interesting. Again, I know it's, it's a worrying moment, <laughs> this, because it's very hard. And you, you play it absolutely, there's no problems. But do listen to what you're playing. You know, melodic, harmonically, it's yeah. not easy music. You know, so I find the use of your bow is very easy and fluid. Okay. But I would argue... There's, a, there's an effort to it, yeah. ha um, harmonically. Yeah. So just keep listening, yeah? yeah? And also here, I would suggest three strings. Okay. Okay. It's just such a, a folk thing, yeah. which of yeah. course he, yeah. Was, yeah. he was obsessed by, having gone out and recorded all of the local yeah. folk music. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was better. That was better. Just keep thinking about this idea of, of justifying is it always needed that you play so well? Your bow change, which is great, it's a, it's a compliment to you that you can play very beautifully, but in this sort of music, sometimes you might have to change your technique that you yeah. can um, colour it yeah. a bit differently. Yeah. So keep, keep thinking about that, that's, uh, that's a big thing. Like, for example, play, play three before 70. And as the harmony gets e to the climax, really show us that you're uh, listening to it. Thank 
I'm a doggy. I'm a doggy. I would. I think you've earned it. Uh, labyrinth. Trumpet. <laughs> you know, enjoy enjoy the colour of it. Yeah. And I, I would do it on one string as well yeah. because <laughs> it's the gesture of it. I know it's easier to play this, but I. It's not the right colour. Yeah, so this crisis moment here, this G-sharp, I know it's hard, but don't ever practice it in a way where you go away from the gesture of it, which is, mm -hmm. it's like these two massive bah, trombones, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know it's easier not to lift the bow, but I would really be brave. Um, <laughs> here. Okay. They're like okay. these yeah. two pillars when they come. Yeah. 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 And again, I know it's easier to play this. I know it's easier because I can find it, yeah. and it's lovely, but it's not lovely <laughs> music. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you, yeah, be very brave and dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And again, I would say. You can't, you've got time to put your bow on and pull. Yeah. Again, if you go too late, then you have to do this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah be brave and get there earlier to mm -hmm. articulate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a world of difference. Musically, instrumentally and everything. Just because you go like a millisecond before, you're ready to yeah. whoosh, play. Yeah. Not the bad tennis player like, running <laughs> late for the ball. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is all good. I think when this melodic material comes, uh, could you play from there for me, and just enjoy where we are here? This is sort of like a aftershock of all that, isn't it? <sighs> Lament, whatever it is, really heavy. Good, one more time. Really listen to the piano. I feel, mm. I'm, again, I'm being hypercritical, it sounds great, but you're just vibrating, even when it goes into the maggiore. <sighs> but you're, you're here to come away from your viola. Always instruments you...
Yeah. Good. Good. And just as a, a constant ongoing exercise forever, I would always like challenge yourself to um, be in control of your point of contact, mm -hmm. like it's your golden ticket Good. to anywhere. Because if you if you really can control this, it's such a powerful thing with expression. Because what, what happens immediately is if this isn't always completely engaged, then we compensate here. Because of course we want the instrument to vibrate. You know, and I would say always, I would al almost say play everything without vibrato just to get the instrument resonating. Okay. Yeah. And actually the irony is that the more engaged your bow is, the, the less vibrato you need to make an impact. Yeah. You know, if you experiment with it. You know, this, this difference of uh, contact point is a, a whole conversation in itself. But I wonder that here, when you get to the bottom of everything... Uh, can we just play that phrase with the piano? Just um, before... yeah. Maybe... Then the major comes there. I wouldn't automatically just vibrate. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And again, yes. there's another way to play. And of course you can play it however you want, but there's a resistance. Just creating the sound with your bow, mm -hmm. yeah. which is the biggest, biggest thing I, I would say experiment with that. Because yeah. then your vibrato becomes a different animal yeah. that reacts quicker and in a more personal way, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm not saying vibrate less, just yeah. Think about yeah. it as a big thing. Play it a bit more like that. Very, <laughs> very awkward this part. Yeah. But whatever. Again, don't try. Don't think too instrumentally because it's fine what you're doing. But still, it's a comment. It's yeah. a B major comment to the to the flute. Whoever plays that. So we do need to have a bit of a little bit more presence okay. with that. You know, okay. I know it's it's awkward with all these fists, but I think if you just give it a little bit more of a rhythmic kick, whatever your bowing choice is, I don't mind. Okay. Okay. Just to support that theme, which is quite a sort of sunny theme. Your default setting is you want to do that. Yeah. And you could get more strength with less input if yeah. you were to do this. Yeah. Just the subtle difference between putting the bow on and pulling, or yeah. you're, you're, I'd say there's 20% more effort in that. Yeah. And if you add that to every bar you play in music, that's a very tiring amount, you know. So, T bar yeah. in, the, in the string. I would draw your attention to, it's very well played. Maybe it's... 
It's almost... It feels like Bartok to me, that music. <laughs> Just the sort of folk writing. I would be more... If you engage the bow more, you don't need to worry too much about the... the soft-edged nature. But again, it's maybe a question of, of taste, but I would say you could investigate a little bit more sizzle yeah, yeah, yeah. to the bow. Mm. But listen to all those Hungarian players anyway. I mean, there's a lot, like Zigeti, such a great Hungarian player. Better. That's better. Good. Let's just let's continue to the next page. And just as a my big comment for this next passage is, go with what he writes. That I wouldn't influence it more than you need to. I think there's a drama in the combat between you two. Just playing it, bah, like a okay. tank. Okay. Okay. Don't interfere with it too much, unless you really want to. Taking quite a lot of time with it, which is which is fine. But I would start from a more rigorous yeah. place, maybe. Even. Try it just in tempo once and see how it feels. I'd put the whole thing together in one, okay, yeah. one mm. combat section yeah, yeah, yeah. before the, the, the next cadenza comes. Um, and again, use your fingers to influence more. positions, low. Okay. So they'll give you more clarity. Okay. Yeah? And it also sounds like a cembalon, which was his inspiration for a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. little gap yeah. <laughs> which is fine if you again the, my, the main thing I want you to take away from today is if you can justify it and you say I want a gap then I'm happy yeah, yeah, <laughs> but if it's just happening without thinking about yeah. it then it's something to think about yeah. yeah so just to put it out there I think the whole thing could exist very fluidly yeah. like, like that yeah. yeah so just always justify and listen to what you're doing it's mm -hmm. the biggest mm -hmm. thing um, how are we doing for time I don't want to 25 2 and it's coming at 10 2 Okay, cool. Um, so that's a sort of general thought about that. Play the cadenza for us again. I thought that was very well played and enjoy the fact that you have the different voices. Try not to overplay the A's. Yeah. You could almost imply them, like we start to hear them in, in our imagination yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in a way. So you could sort of really play with that idea. Mm -hmm. We don't always have to play. You could... You know, really separate the, yeah. the material.
Yeah, it's pretty good. I just, I would be more um, uh, suggestive with it. Mm. You could really play with the, the voicing yeah. of it a little bit more, I think. Um, That's the change, isn't it? Invite the orchestra in. But, yeah, just go further with what you're doing. We, we need to hear much more separation of these little... Yeah, yeah. Particularly here. Uh, yeah. I like that line. Um, go from 140. Again, it's, a, it's this obsession with like codizer with this cembalo. You want to hear the sticks hitting. Okay. Don't just try and play it well. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, the fingerings are only suggestions. I would probably go for something much more normal, mm -hmm. just to support the. It seems a little complicated for me. Just I would just stay in one position. Just hits. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll leave that with you. Yeah. Um, could we carry on just to hear the next episode again? like you were experimenting with, really think about that idea here. Just one thing about this scale that goes up with fifths. Tell, again, tell me, forgetting the fact that it's difficult and the fifths and everything, tell me what is exciting about the, that entrance for you. If you just give us two bars before mm -hmm. the viola entry and just really mm -hmm. listen. I find it exciting that you carry on the 16th yeah. notes. So maybe that tradition of... <laughs> is, I don't know, I would, I would just enjoy the rhythm of it. Play it in tempo. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. And play a, play a Boeing that... The, these Boeings are suggestions. I would really take the easy option out. Which I, for me, could you just play it? Fiddly. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. want to, 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 to just get the connection of the semi quavers, okay. and I bet if you enjoy that, technically it will feel much easier. Okay. I think you're worrying. <laughs> you're worrying a little bit, I think, <laughs> because it's difficult. <laughs> but distract your worry with the yeah. the yeah. idea yeah. that he's playing with. Have a think about that, yeah? yeah you know, yeah, if, yeah, if you yeah, can yeah. work out what's yeah. exciting musically, usually the technical stuff becomes okay, more yeah. fun and more and easier. Yeah. And if you do it the other way around, you can spend hours going yeah. down rabbit holes and 
you know, making things harder. Um, so I think we slightly r have run out of time, nearly. So thank you. Have a think about this idea of arm weight. Yeah, yeah. that's important. The idea of pushing and pulling a little bit more actively here. Mm -hmm. I think that will really help. And particularly this idea of organising your bows. So you're always going a little bit earlier to be able to pull yeah. mm. in very articulate passages. Not always, of course, but in very articulate passages will give you more strength. Mm. Um, and just about vibrato, the, the, the sort of general comment would be find the place at which your instrument is resonating. Yeah. And then generally that's where the vibrato will sort of help yeah. Yeah. colour it. Apart from very extreme moments, but find the natural sound from your instrument. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's great. Thank you for playing. <laughs>